Hello, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on Client-Side Network Setup, Part 2. Today we're going to be discussing how to establish various network connections, uh, proxy settings, and then we'll finish with Remote Desktop. And with that, let's go ahead and begin this session. So let's begin by discussing how to establish various types of network connection. The first network connection we're going to discuss is the dial-up connection, old school. Now dial-up requires a modem and an internet service provider that will accept a dial-up connection. How do you set one up? Select network and sharing center from the control panel. Select set up a new connection or network and then enter the information provided by the ISP. That's the phone number to use, your username, password, etc. Then you get to choose to either allow or disallow other people to use your network connection. And then you get to select create and you're done. Now let's discuss VPN. VPN is a virtual private network. This allows for a private connection over a public network. It creates an encrypted tunnel between the PC and the VPN server or firewall. How do you set one up? Select Network and Sharing Center from the control panel. Select Set up a new connection or network. Select Connect to a workplace. Select Use my internet connection, VPN. Enter the IP address of the VPN server. Then you need to enter the proper username and password and a domain if required. Select Connect. The computer will cycle through all of its available tunneling protocols until it and the VPN server agree upon which one to use. And then you have your connection. Now let's discuss wireless network connection. Now wireless networks require the capability, so you need to have a wireless adapter at the minimum for your PC, and a compatible wireless access point, a WAP. And if you really want to add functionality, you need an internet connection. So how do you set one up? The first thing is, is you need to know your service set identifier, your SSID. That is the wireless network's name. Then you should know the type of security used. Is it WEP? Man, I sure hope not. How about WPA? Again, a fail. It should be at least WPA2 or 802.x. But you still need to know which security protocols are in play. Then you click Start. Then you select Connect To from the Start menu. Select the wireless network you wish to join. Then you select Connect. Then you enter the proper credentials at the prompt and select OK. Now you're connected to a wireless network. Now, a wired connection requires a network interface card, a NIC. Actually, they all do. You also need the proper type of cabling, CAT5, CAT5E, is it CAT6, etc. You also need a way to connect to the network, which would be a hub at the minimum. It would be preferred that you use a switch or a router or both. Now let's discuss setup. In most cases, the setup for a wired network is fairly automatic, as access to a functioning switch port is deemed sufficient authorization to use the network. Setup of both wired and wireless networks often use DHCP, Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, to configure the proper IP addresses. Let's move on to proxy settings. Before we can discuss the proxy settings, we need to discuss proxy servers. These enable a network to use caching and filtering on the network. Well, caching conserves bandwidth because it saves frequently requested web pages in its cache. And it provides filtering because it will restrict access to web pages. An added benefit to using a proxy server is that the end user is hidden, shielded, from the internet. They're never seen. Only the proxy server is seen. With that taken care of, let's discuss proxy settings. 
most client-side proxy settings are established by the browser. So how do you set one up? Select Internet Options from the Control Panel. Click the Connections tab, and then go down to the LAN Settings button. Check the box that says Use a Proxy Server for your LAN. Enter the IP address and the port for the proxy server. It is possible to bypass a proxy server for the local network traffic. And then you click OK and you've established your proxy settings. Now let's move on to Remote Desktop. Now, allowing remote desktop access means that you can access your PC from almost anywhere that you have an internet connection. Remote desktop can be a powerful tool in your arsenal, but it also creates a vulnerability in your network. Now, remote desktop settings need to be allowed before the remote desktop can be enabled. By default, Windows Firewall blocks access to the remote desktop feature. So how do you set it up? Well, first off, you go to System from the Control Panel, then you select Remote Settings. Select the radio button that sets the remote connection level that is desired, and then you click Apply. Then you go to Windows Firewall from the Control Panel. Select Allow a Program or Feature through Windows Firewall. Check the box for Remote Desktop, and then check the box for the type of network profile that you're allowing. Is it private or public? That one's not recommended. And then click OK. You have now created access to your remote desktop. Now that concludes this session on client-side network setup part two. We discussed how to establish various types of network connection. We discussed how you establish proxy settings so you can use a proxy server and we finished with Remote Desktop. Now, on behalf of Pace IT, thank you for viewing this, and I'm sure we'll do some more soon.